Hi guys, this is Ardi Wagam. Today we are going to see how to install the SQL Developer and Oracle Linux 6.7. Let's see how do we do that. And the fact is, we just practice on this madness. That is why our status is like a canvas. Chances our advancement is enhancing. And this new expansion is like a mansion. So... First, we need to go for the Google and add the SQL Developer free download and select the Ripple site. From there, we need to accept the terms and condition or as per the Oracle. After that, scroll it down. You will find the Linux version down there. Already downloaded. I'm sorry already accepted so I'm going to download the RPM version so Linux RPM is there so once you click the download the single sign on page will be displayed so yes see the single sign on page is displayed here from there we need to provide the username password after that the installation will be being for security reason I'm just hold just uh, disappear that things so see my SQL developer is downloaded here and at the same time we require the JDK also for our Linux so without JDK the SQL developer can't able to work so we need to download the JDK also so what I'm going to do means see they already provide that JDK 8 or above is required so I'm going to click the JDK 8 to download the latest version of JDK. The site is loading. Yes, it will be opening. The same procedure only, we have to accept that license agreement after that we need to select the appropriate version of JDK for your OS so my voice is the 64-bit Linux so I'm going to select the 64-bit RPM here and click the downloader will be in sync and click OK processing SQL developer is completed ok my JDK version is the version is downloading here so in the meanwhile I need to go to the NSF prompt not this prompt yes prompt is a Let's go to the root download directory where the RPMs has been downloaded. See, it will be visible here. Yes, my JDK also downloaded here. Okay. From here, we need to install the RPMs. How do we install means we are going to use the M installer for that. Before that, I'm going to find uh, which Java because the executable is available or not but it's available here but java is not installed i'm sure on that so i'm going to install the java first it might be take a little bit while why the yes Yes, it's completed. My JDK installation is completed. I 
and also I need to find my JDK complete path whether it is applied or not. Yes, it's installed successfully. I need to find it, find that path also, the path only. So I'm going for the my previous path. From there, I'm going to install the SQL Developer. Oops, it's a typo error. I forgot to use install keyboard. Okay. Provide yes, and it will be beginning. Hope it will not take that much of time. Probably some other process is running on my PC, so so that one it will takes this much of time. If you are working in any other new servers, means it will not take this much of time. I'm sure on that. <clears throat> okay, my installation is completed. Yes, my installation is completed. So now I'm going to start my SQL developer. Okay, provide the SQL developer executable name. Directly, you just provide the SQL developer executable name here. So once it will be behind, it will be prompt for the JDK installation path. So that only on that time I'm find the JDK path. So just copy the JDK path along and paste it here and put the enter. The installation will be begins. See, installation is behind. It's complete. It's on progress. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yes. My SQL developer is opening successfully. And I'm going to connect with my database, which is already existing connection. So, and also we see how to connect as a SysDB. Because probably some of the people who are in this Yes, my SQL developer is opening successfully and I'm going to connect with my database, which is already existing connection. So, and also we see how to connect as a SysDB by the global database name and the username is root and the username is sys, I'm so sorry. So we have to select the SysDB privilege and the host name is localhost and provide the service here. SID is the global database name and test it. My connection has succeeded successfully. So after that, we need to verify on the second level also. Once the connection is established, just open it and provide the statement select asterisk from database. And you have to notice the very important columns. database name, timestamp of database creation, whether the database is in active log mode or not, my database is not in active log mode, and my database in read write, the protection mode is performance, which is the max performance, and see my role of the DB is primary. So these were the important columns what we have to verify when it is a new configuration. So guys, I hope you all enjoy this video. See you on my next video.